Recording. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, and welcome to today's APBP Live. My name is Kit Keller, Executive Director of APBP. It's my pleasure to welcome each of you to the meeting today. And it looks like we have about 20 attendees so far. And thanks for taking time out of your day to participate. Before I turn the program over to Kevin Lucas, APBP's fellow, I'd like to give you a sense of how this um, conversation at APBP Live is going to proceed. A few of you, I think, have participated before, but for many of you, it will be new. So if you are attending in such a way that you have audio, you're currently muted um, for speaking. If you are able to speak and you want to speak, you can simply raise your hand at the time when Kevin is done with his short presentation, and then I will unmute your line and you can speak. Um, so this is a little bit like List Serve Live, if you will, where we can share ideas um, and do it in real time in a conversational way. So with that, I will turn the presentation over to Kevin. Kevin, welcome. Welcome. Hello, Kit. Hello, everyone. Uh, this month's topic uh, is sidewalk riding, for those who may not have known and who, uh, who uh, signed up for uh, APVP Live sessions in advance. Um, we, we weren't able to get information up on the forum this time. Uh, that slipped through the cracks, and I'm sorry for that. Um, we'll get the recording for this and um, maybe the presentation slides and any other information up on the forum. Uh, after this is over, uh, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, this month, we selected uh, sidewalk writing as our topic. Um, it's it's a it's pretty typical, heated discussion on the listserv, so we thought it would be a good topic for a discussion, um, a live discussion amongst members that could potentially lead to some sort of a, a policy. And so, I'm going to get started. Um, I'd like to frame it first. I feel like a lot of the times when when we get when we get conversation on topics such as this, there's a narrow frame of mind for what we're talking about. And I think it's important when we're thinking about who rides on the sidewalk that we're thinking of everyone, not just able bodied adults and then small children, which seems to be the topic of the conversation. You get teenagers, there are um, elderly people, children, men, women of all ages and abilities ride on the sidewalk for different reasons. Um, families ride together. It's, it's, a common, it's a common thing everywhere. And so when we're thinking about it, it's important to think about everyone. Why people ride on the sidewalk? Well, it seems to be that the, the, the main reason is that it, it can be or at least feel safer for people to ride on the sidewalk. Um, there's some data about that a little bit that we'll get into later, but peace of mind uh, is the biggest, is oftentimes the biggest factor in whether someone rides a bike, um, second only to weather, or whether or not a person uh, will take a particular trip, whether or not they feel safe. Um, riding on the sidewalk can be a less stressful ride. Uh, riding in the street, oftentimes uh, people are they feel like they need to keep up or go as quickly as possible to not be in the way of traffic. Um, riding on the sidewalk allows people to be more leisurely, take a more uh, a more relaxing stroll on their bicycle. And uh, cycling is a social activity. I feel like that's actually something that gets overlooked a lot when it comes to this to this topic. Um, people ride bikes not just to get from point A to point B. They ride bikes to ride with people to have an activity to do with friends. And that's not something that's often conducive to being in the street where you have to ride single file or sometimes even riding in a bike lane, which could be narrow enough that it prevents people from riding side by side or comfortably in a group. Um, that includes friends, families, uh, couples. They ride for social activity. And simply because they're allowed to. And um, we'll get into this here about the legality of sidewalk riding. Um, general view seems to be that sidewalk riding is illegal. Um, when, when people are asked that question, that's typically the answer they're given. But it's not that simple, typically. 
um, on a state level, only eight states specifically prohibit sidewalk riding um, because they're, they're, they are vehicles. Further, 10 states have some language that makes it unclear whether or not bicycles are allowed. Um, and then in another eight states, there's no regulation for the use of sidewalks by vehicles or bicycles. And this is at state level. And all this data comes from uh, the League of American Bicyclists. And uh, so many of the laws and ordinances governing this happen at a county or municipal level. Uh, several large cities, uh, such as New York City and Chicago, they ban sidewalk riding outright, and they are strictly enforced. Uh, just last year, New York City gave out about three-quarter as many uh, sidewalk riding summonses as it did speeding tickets. So it's very strictly enforced in New York City. Chicago also bans outright uh, on all sidewalks throughout the city. However, they are actually considering a motion to allow senior citizens to uh, ride on sidewalks currently, as we speak. Uh, many cities and towns ban sidewalk riding in specific areas, uh, such as business districts. This is probably the most common type of sidewalk riding ban out there. Um, downtowns, areas where there's heavy pedestrian traffic, sidewalk riding is banned, and that typically also includes riding skateboards, riding uh, roller blades or, or roller skates, unicycles, anything of that sort is also typically banned in these areas specifically. Um, specific populations uh, are usually allowed to ride on, or sometimes allowed to ride on sidewalks, and that's usually children of a specific age, that which changes depending on uh, where where you are. But these laws can be confusing and even conflicting, even for police. I feel like most of us can probably say that they have themselves or have known someone else who has been stopped by a police officer either on the street or on the sidewalk and told that they are supposed to be doing the other when, when they know actually that the law is the opposite. And uh, this is one of the issues that we're, that we're talking about today and hoping to deal with. Um, an example of this is Old Country Road in Nassau County, New York. This is uh, in my local area. This is, as you can see, uh, it's six lanes. It's pretty high speed traffic. It's not the type of road that someone is comfortable riding a bike on typically unless they're a very experienced rider. However, this is also a border between two villages. So the line here, rep the red line, represents uh, the border for uh, Westbury, New York, the village of Westbury. The, the law in Westbury, New York, disallows sidewalk riding except for children ages 9 and below. The yellow line is actually the village of Garden City, New York. It disallows sidewalk riding except for children ages 16 and below. So you could have a, even a kid on the street, age of 11, be on one side of the street, on the, side, on the sidewalk, cross at the crosswalk, and then immediately be breaking the law because they are still on the sidewalk. It's also worth noting here that this middle road is a county highway, and, it, and on county highways, bicycle riding is prohibited. So in, in legal practice, the only people who are for sure allowed to be on a bicycle on this path at all would be children ages nine and below. So it's what you end. There's surely many examples out there where you have these laws that conflict and they're confusing. And as a result, as you can imagine, there's never any enforcement on this street. I don't, I don't know of anyone who's been pulled over here um, for being on a bicycle. But cars and and bikes are on the road all the time, um, and I don't. I don't know if anyone even knows what the law is. There are dangers of sidewalk riding, obviously. Um, getting hit by a car or hitting a car is actually uh, is one of the dangers, despite people feeling safer, safer uh, of riding on the sidewalk. Um, University of Syracuse study had these, showed these, some of these numbers here, which were surprising um, in some of these intersection crash statistics, uh, 
that 42% of bicyclists on the sidewalk were those hit by motorists turning left, 48% uh, were hit by, when they were on the sidewalk, hit by uh, drivers coming out of an alleyway or driveway, or hit, I should say. Um, sometimes these are, are, are fatal collisions, um, and uh, it, it's typically seen as a, a driver is not looking in that direction or, or looking for fast-moving traffic and they won't see that because it, you know, a cyclist can come out of their, come from their field of vision too quickly. Uh, there's also conflicts with pedestrians. Um, you know, at the risk of being unfair to Mr. Alec Baldwin, he's a celebrity <laughs> example of this. It's a very uh, indicative picture where you can see Alec Baldwin here. Um, he's very close to hitting this girl. There's a stroller to his left, he has a coffee in one hand, a phone in the other, and he's trying to pull the brake with the, the hand he has his phone in. This isn't an all too uncommon situation where you have bikes and pedestrians mixing, where you have essentially people on bikes trying to weed through pedestrians, and this is obviously a situation which can be pretty dangerous. Um, <clears throat> this is another situation that can arise where you have a, a kid who may or may not be riding fast, but um, won't know that a door is about to open from the businesses on the left. And those are the type of situations that can uh, can cause him to, to swerve or, or, or crash into the door or any number of things can happen when you're on the sidewalk in these situations. Um, riding on the sidewalk also reinforces the idea among drivers that cyclists shouldn't be on the road, which it's not necessarily the fault of the cyclists, but when you have when you have so much confusion about what the law actually is, this is something that can arise from it. When you have people who actually don't believe that cyclists should be on the road and begin with, actually think it's illegal, then see cyclists on the sidewalk, it reinforces that idea. Um, cyclists can get tickets and fines, which is one of the things that can prevent a person from riding a bicycle or stop a person from riding a bicycle who's already started. Um, and that's something that we would, uh, we would want to discourage. And uh, there are also liability issues uh, and legal protection in the event of a collision. It, 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 when you're on, the, when you're on a, a bicycle or on the sidewalk and you shouldn't be, if, if there's a collision with a car, it's, it, you you're not likely to be protected because you yourself were breaking a law, um, and that can be uh, that can be a big thing you know, when it comes to uh, hospital bills, insurance, any number of things, and and also for um, being at fault. You know, you can also be just be at fault for a, a situation where you are hit by a car. Um, so I'm going to turn it back to Kit here and open it up to to everyone and see what you guys think on the issue, how we should approach it, and, and, and what your thoughts are on sidewalk riding. Great. Thank you, Kevin. That's really interesting. And it's good to see so many people participating in today's conversation. So just as a reminder, the way that it works is if you have a question, you can raise your hand and I can unmute your line and then you can... Um, say what you want to say and either remain unmuted or um, we can mute your line and move on to the next person. If you are connecting with APBP Live today in a way that doesn't enable you to speak over a phone or over your um, computer microphone, then you can also post a comment in the question box and I'll happily read that. So. We're going to start with a question that John has posted, and um, I'm just checking to see how John is. Uh, it looks like you may have a computer microphone. So, John, I'm going to try to unmute your line and see if um, you can get your question yourself. So, John, uh, you're on the air if you can speak. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, our community has virtually no uh, uh, cycling infrastructure, so uh, everybody rides on the sidewalk. Uh, there's a bylaw forbidding it for uh, bikes with, I think it's above uh, 20 centimeter uh, 
uh, real uh, uh, diameter, uh, but it's largely ignored, except that police do uh, enforce it in uh, the downtown area. There's about three blocks of, of shopping area downtown that uh, where there have been a lot of complaints about cyclists, and so the police have uh, uh, been enforcing that. But otherwise, uh, throughout the rest of the community, uh, people ride on the sidewalk, and it's, it, it certainly is a lot safer because of the la lack of infrastructure. My, uh, what I would uh, like to see happen is a set of rules uh, governing how cyclists behave on the sidewalk, uh, requiring, for example, a bell or a horn to uh, warn people when they're coming up behind them. That's a very common occurrence where the cyclist just noiselessly uh, zoomed on, zoomed by it, and uh, dangerous, obviously a dangerous situation. Uh, so rules like that, that recognize that people are going to ride on the sidewalk, uh, and but but will be required to uh, uh, obey a, a, a set of uh, rules governing their behavior. Uh, <clears throat> police aren't likely to enforce that uh, very strictly, but it does make the uh, liability issue somewhat clearer. Uh, would make it clear that the cyclist uh, is uh, uh, legally on the sidewalk. Uh, but if they don't follow the, uh, uh, the behavioral rules, they'd be open to liability for uh, any accident, uh, you know, hitting a pedestrian of any kind. Uh, <clears throat> an elderly woman was killed in Toronto uh, uh, on the sidewalk with a bike uh, uh, running into her this, this past uh, year. Uh, so it's a definite danger to, uh, uh, to pedestrians. So those are my comments at this point. Okay, thank you, John. And are you speaking to us today from Chatham, Ontario? Chatham, All yeah. right, great. Thank you. Welcome. Well, I'll go ahead and mute your line. And then I'm looking for anyone else who would like to participate. You can raise your hand and I will unmute your line. And we count on conversation here, so don't be shy. Well, Kevin, while we're waiting for, uh, oh, here we go. Ted has op has uh, raised his hand. Ted, your line is unmuted. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Hello, Ted. Yeah. Uh, we're in a, I think some of the issues tend to be between the smaller communities, like we're a relatively small community, uh, Columbia, Missouri, compared to the downtown sidewalk riding you see in the large cities, which is very congested. We certainly have the ordinance where you can't ride in sidewalks downtown. Um, what we see, though, is a lot of on our arterials where there's really no, again, the same thing, no other infrastructure and, and lots of fast traffic, is sidewalks, both perception-wise and maybe even safety-wise, um, tend to be their route of choice rather than trying to get into fast traffic, which only the fearless will do. I think like, you'll see a few people, but even I'll take a sidewalk periodically um, just to avoid riding in four lanes of 40 mile an hour traffic. Um, so there's a little difference, I think, between like the small cities like us that don't have a lot of density in the sidewalk, where it may be the perception of safety is there. Um, I agree it is always a hazard of turning traffic. It's, it's always the dilemma, do we encourage people to, um, or even allow or encourage people to uh, use something that may have a higher risk factor as opposed to not riding at all to go someplace. So there's a bit of a dilemma on perception of safety versus actual safety in the stats. Some of the stats for uh, accidents on sidewalk riding may also be due to the fact that the people who ride on sidewalks are usually beginners or not as experienced and may not be looking for accidents. So therefore, there may be some higher accident rate um, shown on sidewalks just because of experience level. I don't know if there are any studies that would uh, talk about that. but yeah, again, the same, I think it's a kind of a downtown area versus the outer parts of the smaller cities that may be different. You raise a number of good points, Ted. Um, in my own community, which is about 11,000 uh, population, we have a an ordinance similar to what John was talking about, where actually 
sidewalk riding is um, it is uh, outlawed, if you will, in or prohibited in the downtown area only. And there isn't really a good definition of what that downtown area is. But the police um, don't enforce it greatly. It actually, the ordinance exempts uh, small wheeled bicycles that children might ride. Um, and because of, of the constrained right of way in the downtown, I think there are people who simply do feel safer riding on the sidewalk, but the issue of notification of uh, to the pedestrians is also huge. Um, so thank you, Ted. That's a really great, good comment. And I'm muting your line, and I'm going to open up the line for Kelly, if Kelly is able to speak. Your line is unmuted. You posted a question, so you can go ahead and ask it live if you can. Um, so we're just checking to see if Kelly has uh, uh, has audio, and perhaps not. Um, okay, so what Kelly has asked is, are there any best practices for educating riders and walkers as to proper sidewalk etiquette? Does anyone have a good set of regulations regarding who has to yield to who and how on the sidewalk? So does anyone have a response for Kelly? Are there best practices that you know of either in writing or in education? And I would actually be interested to hear this too because what, you, what, you know, what we find is that there are so many different places with such different rules that it, it, this could be one of those things where it is really helpful to see how other people approach it mm -hmm. um, because I've in in the communities that I've uh, lived in and known of, I've never actually seen um, a, a a restriction on the size of bike being on the sidewalk. It's typically only the age of the person, mm -hmm. and that was that wasn't even a factor that I ever really even thought of when when putting together this presentation, which is which is which just goes to show how how varying the the ordinances can be. And so it would be interesting to see if someone has. Uh, put together something or, or knows of something from the yeah and locality. maybe Wisconsin just does things oddly so I have a about five hands that are raised and I'm not sure if these are comments specifically to Kelly's question so I'm just going to go through and unmute lines and we'll see where we go uh, the first person I'm going to unmute is Amir uh, Freund Amir, can you, can you speak? Are you able? Yes. Hi, welcome. Yeah, I hope so. Can you yes, hear us? Yes, hello. Hi, this is actually Gordon in, in Nanaimo in, in BC. Um, the question we have is that uh, we have an older section of highway, uh, sort of a secondary highway that travels adjacent to our downtown, and we are looking at options to explore reworking that highway. It's a, a sort of a typical four-lane secondary highway with um, intersections along its length. And while the rest of our downtown is quite walkable, uh, this highway was designed back in the 50s and, and just never has got upgraded. So we're looking at uh, sort of reworking that street to better support the adjacent retail that's street front oriented. Um, and one of the challenges that we're having is that we'd really like to add on street parking. We'd really like to have better, wider pedestrian facilities. We'd like to have street trees. And, and we would like to have cycling facilities, but um, because this highway, very, very few cyclists are riding the length of the highway. There's better routes. There's a multi-use trail just a half a kilometer away running parallel. Um, we have very few cycling trips along the highway, but what, what we do envision is that people will want to ride down to this short sort of four to five block segment and, um, and access some of those businesses. So one of the ideas that we were thinking about was to, instead of using valuable cross-sectional space on the street for bike lanes, um, to actually uh, reduce the width of the road and, and have wider sidewalks. But that's a little bit inconsistent with sort of general practice. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that, whether they think that's a good idea. Uh, Kevin, we'll go to you first. Yeah, that, that's actually 
that type of problem is actually not uh, uncommon in, in what I was doing a little research on in that when you have these high volume routes, um, oftentimes what you'll have is cyclists will, they will cycle maybe on the road near to it and then use sidewalks to cross it um, as opposed to going on it because they're just not comfortable. They're not going to turn out of a, a highway style turn lane and, and all of those things. Um, I mean, I, I think you know, it's tough to say. I feel like what what you end up with there is you end up with like the ideal scenario for both sides of this issue, which is a wider sidewalk, which would allow people to comfortably uh, ride and potentially ride in groups or families. But then also a wider sidewalk could could also potentially encourage a person on a bicycle to ride too fast among pedestrians. Um, I, it's tough to say where I would where I would fall on that. I mean, does it does anyone else have have thoughts on on that type of issue? Just one one further comment that we sort of noted in this is that we don't anticipate really anybody riding from one end of this section of five blocks to the other end. What we sort of expect is people will ride from side streets and then just sort of work their way to the center of the block, whatever they're going to access, and then probably probably they're going to work their way off of the block. So I don't know if that makes a difference, but we're, we're just thinking is that instead of cyclists actually traveling long, you know, along the street, and, and perhaps that encourages greater speeds, but it's very likely that they are, are traveling less than half a block um, you know, to, to just get to a destination, and then they'll, they'll go back to their more preferred, preferred routes. All right. Right. And, 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 and what we what we definitely want to discourage is is weaving um, from from road to to sidewalk and 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 those type of things and I feel like that's one of those things that sometimes can happen when you have these people who may want to cross or just go from one little section to another section is they'll hop on the street because they're comfortable because there's no cars so they can go faster and then hop off the street when a car comes and it, we all know that can be very dangerous because it relies on the perception of the person who's trying to move quickly, uh, whether or not there's cars or whether or not there's pedestrians, especially when they're looking behind them for cars. Well, thanks for that question. And I think we'll go ahead and mute your line and go next to Elizabeth. Uh, or Yes, Elizabeth Tan. So your line is... Uh, Hi. Yes, you're on the call. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, I, I'm from the city of Markham. I'm in CPAC, the Cycling and Pedestrian Advisory Committee for Council. And we do have at the moment a motion going on to maybe allow cycling on the sidewalk um, if, if the speed limit of the road is uh, 50 and above. And also uh, we will forbid cycling on the sidewalk on, on uh, busy areas like Main Street. But uh, I know that in Burlington they allow or already um, sidewalk riding except um, in, in the business area again. I think it is a good temporary solution for um, getting more people on the bike because people just don't take the bike if they feel it's uh, dangerous on the road. And I think we don't have the funding at the moment to put uh, cycle tracks everywhere, like segregated uh, bike paths. So maybe on um, empty uh, sidewalks, um, it is probably good to allow uh, riding on the sidewalk. So I, I'm not sure um, uh, how you feel about that. Um, Kevin, would you like to go ahead and respond first? Yeah, the I I feel like um, speed speed is probably the greatest factor when it comes to uh, people feeling safe being among cars. Fifty miles an hour is very fast. I I, I would imagine um, there was actually a, a level oh, sorry, of sorry, it is fifty kilometers. 50 kilometers, okay. An hour. So that is miles per hour. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there was a, um, oh, there was a level of service guide 
out there somewhere and hope maybe somebody knows and can uh, post it on the forum um, once I get it up and running after this is over uh, that, that showed the kind of maximum speed to which cyclists, you, your average cyclist I should say, would be comfortable riding among cars. Um, I don't know what 50 kilometers an hour is in miles per hour, but I um, believe because you have your levels of cycling comfort, um, yeah. the only, it's, it, only the most ardent cyclists will typically be comfortable riding with fast moving cars. Um, outside of that, it's it, we really need a bike lane for people to be comfortable. Sometimes people will do it, but they will they're not comfortable doing it, and that's that can lead to accidents in its own right. I mean, when you imagine, um, you know, say I have these images up, you know, the the, the elderly gentleman on the in the bottom left image, he's he, with running with his with his grandson running with him. He's probably moving on his bicycle very slow for his grandson to be running with him, and he's probably not going to be ever comfortable riding with high moving traffic and so those are the kind of situations where we have to wonder whether or not a speed limit uh, it would be helpful unless that speed limit was quite low. Okay. In, in lieu of having a, a bike lane is what the what the issue is. I mean, you know, personally um, I find myself leaning more towards allowing people to ride on the sidewalk for that very reason. They're just not comfortable enough and I don't want to discourage bicycle riding. Well, we've had a number of people jump in and uh, do the math for us here. So uh, 50 <laughs> kilometers uh, per hour would be 31 miles per hour. That's a typical 30 miles per hour. Thanks, Lisa, and two for that. So I think, Elizabeth, we'll go ahead and mute your line and move on to the next person. Thanks for your question. Um, so I, I see a few more hands. I see John and Matthew and uh, Sue and Ted. So we'll go um, we'll go to Matthew first since we haven't heard from uh, Matthew. Your line is open if you're able to speak with us. Hi, can you yes, hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, two sort of points, I guess. Uh, one coming out of the discussion that's been had, and, and one that I wanted to put out to the group. Um, in terms of uh, data collection for cycling, uh, and specifically for sidewalk riding, uh, something we're, uh, I'm in uh, Cambridge, Ontario, something we're looking at doing is uh, some dedicated cycling counts uh, and hoping to specifically highlight sidewalk riding in those, in those counts and try to identify which areas of the city have this issue going on the most. Um, but the question I wanted to put out to the group would be, um, has anyone done anything similar to that? And what, what sort of conclusions do you draw from that data? Or what sort of recommendations come out of that data? Um, so does an area with high sidewalk riding lead to, sort of by default, a definition or a recommendation for uh, uh, an actual piece of cycling infrastructure? Uh, how does that work if anyone else has done something similar? Uh, my comment was uh, uh, the, the gentleman from the NIMO was talking about um, looking at the situation where he wanted to narrow the roadway and widen the sidewalk um, as a potential uh, solution for cyclists in that corridor. Um, something that uh, a lot of municipalities in southern Ontario at least are doing is uh, boulevard uh, multi-use trails. Uh, so basically you're replacing the sidewalk with a a wider multi-use asphalt trail uh, as opposed to using concrete uh, and this is intended to be used by both pedestrians and cyclists. Um, I think it raises an interesting issue about how you go about communicating to residents uh, which facility is appropriate for which use. Um, obviously the surface type uh, is supposed to be the key indicator that you know if it's asphalt it's a multi-use trail and you can cycle on it and then you put up signage to support that but um, it, it could create some confusion where uh, people who are riding bikes think that, uh, well, if I'm okay to ride on this quote-unquote sidewalk, even though it's asphalt, uh, they may begin to perceive that they can ride on any sidewalk. So mm. 
uh, those would be my two colleagues. Yeah, interesting. That's a, a good point. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Kevin, would you like to respond before we go on to the next questioner? Just to say that I am also interested in whether or not um, people have data and, and how they collected that data, because I feel like a lot of the data that I've seen is actually pretty anecdotal, um, where it's mentioned that these people were you know, these people, these people who were involved in collisions were on the sidewalk, but that doesn't necessarily tell me a full story. It doesn't doesn't tell me whether or not a collision would have occurred uh, if they were walking as opposed to being on a bicycle, uh, if that makes sense. So I, I am also interested in, in if people are collecting data and how they're doing it. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'm going next to open up Sue's, uh, Sue Suave's line. And Sue, you had a couple of points that you made about... Um, the fines, and actually we have a question from Jamal for you, whether that $65 fine is U.S. or Canadian. Well, we'll take the U.S. if you'll give it to us, but it's really Canadian. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, and so we have a new active transportation bylaw that took two years of work for staff to clear through council and the public process. It was approved last August. And um, it came out of a process that started because we had um, a very eager group of grade six longboarders who came to our council and said that they were being penalized for using active transportation because the only place that they were legal was on our multi-use trails. So council asked us to update our bylaws, um, which turned out, as you can expect, to be fairly complicated. and. Um, the outcome I'm pretty pleased with. Um, so we did some sort of background research into um, what was permitted other places and also tried to get a good handle on whatever data there was around sidewalk riding and collisions and, um, you know, is that data that much different than the roads? How does it compare? And our staff recommendation was going to be to permit sidewalk riding outside of the downtown for all ages. Um, mostly because we have done bike counts the last three years, and even though sidewalk riding has been not permitted in our city for any age group ever, um, there's a third of our cyclists are on the sidewalk. Um, so I was thinking, well, if people are going to ride on the sidewalk, let's at least be able to give them information about how to do it as well as possible, and that if it's illegal, we can't really do that. But our insurer was very uncomfortable saying that bicycles are not expected on the sidewalk, and so we would be facing um, increased risk if we permitted that. So what we did in the end was we said, well, City of Toronto just passed a new bylaw, and they permit children under 14 years of age on the sidewalk. So if they can do it, we can do it. And we just left it at that. Um, but we did also address the long borders and the inline skaters by permitting them on roads that have cycling lanes. Um, and to the question about the side paths on roads, we're um, consciously or unconsciously um, heavily into that sort of type of infrastructure. And um, I think in outlying areas, it seems to work reasonably well where there aren't a lot of intersections. Um, but I think we're learning that we need to uh, provide center lines so that people learn to keep to the right and that um, helps the cyclists to be able to move along at a clip um, that they're happy with without um, clipping pedestrians too tightly and also that what we do at intersections needs to be better. So we kind of have learned that. But the other thing that we added into our bylaw, um, because we have some of these side paths and you're not allowed to ride on the sidewalk, but you can on a multi-use trail. So what is an asphalt trail on the side of the road considered? So to get around all of that, we said if a sidewalk is wider than two meters wide and it's outside of the downtown, you're allowed to ride there, period. So we've done a lot of thinking and change on this in the last year. Gosh, it sounds like we'd like to uh, see some of those, uh, some of that information that you've worked on. If you have a link you can post or if you'd like to s send it to Kevin afterwards, Kevin's sure. email is apbp.fellow at apbp.org. Okay. 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 Great. Good. The whole purpose of the 
APBP Live, is, this is a project actually of our communications committee and then the policy and legislative action team within that committee. And the goal is to develop uh, policies for APBP's board to consider and um, prepare a short statement that would be vetted through APBP. And because this is still a, a pilot program, we're still in the process of working out the details about how that will work. Uh, and we want this to be a member-driven initiative with examples that come up through the membership. So uh, your information would be really helpful, Sue. Thank you so much. Sure. Yep. Okay, great. I'll mute Sue's line now, and we'll move next to John and then to Ted. So, John, uh, your line is now unmuted. Hi, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, another, uh, hi, Sue, uh, another um, option on the, the downtown uh, problem. We're doing a similar streetscaping thing to what was described earlier, widening sidewalks. Uh, Finishing off our tree uh, line along between the sidewalk and the uh, and the road, and uh, one of the possible directions they're going to use shallows on the uh, roadway and potentially reduce the speed limit, probably to uh, uh, 30 kilometers, which is 20 miles an hour. Uh, figuring that uh, most cyclists would could be quite comfortable uh, in in that kind of traffic, uh, and uh, so that all cyclists would be expected to all ride on the roadway, but in much more comfortable uh, situation. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Okay. Thank you, John. So we'll mute John's line now and go next to Ted. Your line is open, Ted. Uh, thank you. I don't want to dominate the uh, conversation, but there was a comment earlier about best practices on uh, sidewalk riding downtown. Um, kind of dealing with several issues there. One is we have a very defined downtown area with uh, no sidewalk riding allowed in that district. Um, that being said, there's an enforcement issue, and just because the law is there doesn't mean that um, people aren't riding on sidewalks downtown. And we have a university town, so we're getting new people in and a lot of foreign students. We went to some research to find out if anybody had a successful program to discourage downtown bike riding, and nobody said that anything that worked. So we're going to try something anyway and, and do some uh, sidewalk marking. I think we're chalk initially with, you know, like, don't ride on the sidewalk or something like that and see if that works. I'm not sure if we get any statistics out of it. But having having that ordinance is one thing, but actually having some sort of enforcement is a whole different world, um, whether you're pleased or willing to do it or not. Um, second comment I had is about um, bike riding on the uh, four-lane road or arterials. city changed the standards probably here about, um, in Columbia, about 10 years ago to um, for the cross-section of arterials and minor arterials, even near district, business districts, we have what's shown as a sidewalk on one side and then what the city calls a pedway on the other, which is an eight-foot sidewalk um, with a grass strip between that and the, and the road for arterials and along with bike lanes on the road. So the pedway is listed as sort of a bike-compatible side path, eight-foot. Um, People, the rider give me comments sometimes that people yell at, have they been yelled at by, for riding on it from people walking? So we're debating doing maybe some center striping too. I think someone else mentioned that about uh, if you want to allow bikes there somehow indicated. So again, it's a city standard. It's been going in in quite a few arterials and people that like um, the bike lanes use those. A lot of people can use the pedway, which is just on one side though. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ted. Kevin, um, we have about 15 minutes left, so do you want to try to weave together what we have learned so far? And certainly anyone who has additional questions, you can raise your hand and still participate in the conversation. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it's good to see so many people dealing with this issue and knowing it's such a complicated one um, is what led us 
was, is what led us here. I'm, if, if it was if it were cut and dry, it wouldn't be worthy to have an ABBP live policy discussion about. That's for sure. And I feel like um, what everyone is is talking about so far in today's session, which is just flying by um, because it's been such a productive one, is that uh, yeah, different situations just call for different measures, and that's. Um, and that's yeah. That's, there's good there and there's bad there. It's a, it's a, it's good that it's being dealt with. It's that's um, it's it's a little disheartening when it's so difficult to find a way to to keep writing social. Um, uh, oftentimes it's 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 really easy to just think of riding a bicycle as just a means of transportation and not a social activity. I feel like that's one of the things that I hope that we can keep. Uh, in mind when we're making decisions. Um, if I may, um, pose the question in here: How do you, uh, you know, how how does the group feel APBP should respond to this as a as a group um, at an individual community level? Uh, obviously, the prescription is going to be different based on based on how it works, but um, as a group. I'm wondering how people feel we should uh, we should approach it and potentially come together or with uh, something to to uh, pitch to the board um, some sort of policy supporting or opposing it in general uh, or or supporting or opposing it in certain situations maybe uh, a recommendation an official BP recommendation of some potential solutions or our own sidewalk safety guide, or, or uh, I'm wondering if anyone else has any other ideas for how potentially as a group we can approach this topic. And I will post the presentation. I saw that question. Can we get a link to the presentation? I will post it on the forum um, later, and I will try to send out um, a link to everyone who is here to, um, to that. Great, thank you. Do you have any ideas about how it should be done? Um, so I see John's hand up, so let's go to John. Your line is open. John? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, one something we haven't touched on, but uh, it's been used by the uh, Ontario uh, Highways uh, Group at defining what uh, <clears throat> bikeway uh, uh, facilities should be provided, and they use uh, they distinguish between low speed and high speed, but the high speed cutoff, uh, the cutoff between the two is uh, 75 kilometers an hour, which is uh, like 45 miles an hour, too high in my opinion. Uh, uh, but they <laughs> they use that, they use truck volume and uh, ADT, uh, the, the average uh, daily traffic uh, measure as uh, three criteria to tell to say what uh, uh, where it's safe for the cyclist to ride on the roadway <clears throat> and uh, their uh, their criteria lead them to say well when it's no longer safe to ride in that kind of traffic we should provide a bike lane but uh, the similar sort of rule could point to uh, allowing uh, sidewalk riding as well uh, the uh, Minnesota DOT has used a similar kind of guidelines. Their uh, speed cutoff is somewhat lower, but uh, similar sort of uh, depending on, on how much traffic there is and the speed of that traffic. Um, the Ontario uh, uh, Transportation Group also looks at truck volume, which uh, <laughs> For those of us who have semi-speed and bias, is quite relevant. Uh, so that's a that's a possible way to approach the thing and sort out the uh, the various uh, um, levels of, of concern. Thank you, John. 
Okay. Uh, we had a couple of suggestions. I just wanted to bring them to everyone's attention. Uh, Lawrence said maybe just a paper with issues for jurisdictions to consider when addressing sidewalk cycling without any hard recommendations. And Elizabeth suggested recommendations to allow sidewalk riding will be beneficial. Um, so anyone else want to weigh in on uh, an answer to Kevin's question? Kevin, did you happen to take a look at the um, PDIC Pedestrian Bicycle Information Center to see if they had any guidance on this? I didn't see any. Um, I didn't. I didn't dig too deep mm -hmm. at the uh, Bike Pet Info Center. Okay. I looked a lot at um, America Walks and and uh, mm -hmm. League of American Bicyclists because um, I was interested in in how um, our organizations you know, negotiate their support or opposition based on the conflict that can occur between bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, I didn't notice any at Bike Pet Info Center. It's not to say that there isn't any. Um, but I do, I do really like this idea of uh, potentially uh, Lawrence's idea of uh, a paper with, with, with the issues um, for jurisdictions to consider addressing sidewalk side, cycling without having our own hard recommendations because I do feel like hard recommendations could be too prescriptive. Um, you know, I, yeah, I put these up as ideas to get people talking, but I mean obviously a policy supporting or opposing is probably also too prescriptive. It would really be based on a person's situation. Um, but I do like that idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, and I am wondering if, uh, if anyone has any others. Okay. All right. Um, well, let's see if we have any other comments from anyone. I'll, I'm looking to see if there are any other hands raised. Okay, I see a couple more. Here we have a, a comment from Jason. So, Jason, I've opened your line. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm a member of the D.C. Pedestrian Advisory Council, and I just I don't have any necessarily brilliant uh, advice for the group. I was more sort of on this call to listen, but uh, we did recently engage with our counterparts at the D.C. Bicycle Advisory Council, and this was sort of motivated by a council member who's no longer on our local city council, but who had initially proposed legislation at the end of uh, last year to ban sidewalk riding anywhere where there's an adjacent bike lane. And I know that there was concern in the cycling community about that very much. And so they had kind of reached out and wanted to engage with pedestrian advocates. And, and uh, so we've had a discussion. Uh, we have come up with a, a series of principles that we can agree to, which sort of starts with both the fact that we're, as pedestrians and bicyclists, both vulnerable road users and face some of the same threats, and recognition that cycling on the sidewalk is partly a symptom of a larger problem, that there's not good enough infrastructure on the streets. Um, so I mean, I think a lot of what it comes down to, in my mind, is sort of judgment of bicyclists as they're biking on the sidewalks, whether they're going too fast, uh, how they're being perceived by pedestrians, uh, who they're passing, are they passing too close, you know, are the sidewalk conditions crowded enough that people need to dismount and walk their bicycle in certain locations. Uh, but the law here is really just that cyclists on the sidewalk where it's permitted uh, cannot create a hazard for any other uh, user of the sidewalk. So it's, it's a difficult issue, I think, to come up with any hard and fast rules. A lot of it comes down to, I think, education and maybe just sort of providing what are some of the best practices that have been used elsewhere. Great. Good comment. Thank you for that, Jason. Um, next, let's see. I thought I saw another hand up. Hmm. Um, Gosh, I guess the hand went down. So sorry about that. Um, actually, yes, it was it was uh, Lawrence's hand. So thanks for raising it again, um, Lawrence. I see that I unmuted your line, and you seem to be self muted. So if you can unmute your line, you can speak. Go ahead. 
Hi there. Hope you can hear me. Yes, right. we can. Thank you. Excellent. Um, thank you for the discussion and the opportunity to weigh in. Um, I really appreciated the uh, last uh, comment. Um, and I was trying to follow up with uh, our uh, transportation staff in Olympia, Washington, about uh, sidewalk cycling, um, because the bicycling master plan for the city references or addresses sidewalk cycling and um, references a, um, an RCW, a revised code of Washington, that's our state law, uh, a specific one. But when I tried to look at that online, there was no such law. So there may have been a law that was then repealed or altered in some way. So I mention this just as um, uh, if APBP has um, a paper with issues to uh, bring up um, uh, regarding sidewalk cycling. There's just sometimes the issue of um, things getting somewhat dusty <laughs> at, at the uh, local level or not staying um, current with other uh, legislative issues at the state level. Um, I suggested to our staff that uh, they check with um, something we call the uh, Municipal uh, Service Research uh, MSRC Corporation, I don't know, uh, uh, service. It, it's, it's basically a state um, service to help uh, local jurisdictions um, research laws uh, and, and other issues. So um, I just wanted to point out that sort of pitfall, and I asked the question, have we been quoting something in our bike plan and in responses to the public that actually is no longer true. So I just bring that up as a potential pitfall um, for local jurisdictions. That's a great point. Um, laws can change, certainly, and um, we here at APBP, we're always eager to know what is the best practice out there. And because APBP covers both the U.S. and Canada, we want to have a nice sampling from both countries and ideally also examples from around the world. So there are several organizations, um, such as you mentioned, Lawrence, about uh, that, that can be resources for what is the best law in a particular state or possibly province. Um, that's a, a really good point to reach out to those organizations as well. Kevin, back to you. We have about two minutes left. Do you want to do a wrap? Yeah, actually, I just want to say thank you to everyone that participated. Um, APVP Live doesn't work without the participation of its members. So uh, I want to thank everybody. I thought this was a really good conversation today. And I think we can get um, some. Good, I think we got some good out the information out of this, and I, I think that we'll be able to come to something um, to bring to the board. And so I just want to thank everybody, and also remind you that we do APP Live every month, and uh, we don't have next month's topic yet, but you can register for next month's topic um, using the same link you used to register for this one. Uh, if, even if you just want to join just to, to listen, oftentimes we join just to listen and end up having something important to say. And so um, I recommend people join up. Great. Thank you, Kevin. And any um, proposal that would go to the board would certainly be also, um, it would be circulated back to the membership. Um, again, you know, as smart as our board members are, and they are very smart, they work in their jurisdictions where they typically work or consult. So we, we definitely want to bring together the, the bigger brain power of all of APDP to discuss these topics. So I have a, just one more point I wanted to share with everyone. Um, and there's been a really robust conversation in the question box, and I've tried to send out um, send that back to the whole audience for you to see. We'll also record this and post it to the 
uh, APBP forum along with the recording of today's discussion. So with that, I think we're, we're finished for today, and thank you for participating. If you do have a topic that you would like to suggest that APBP consider for APBP Live, that is, is uh, our desire. We want, again, for this to be a member-driven initiative. So with that, thanks, everyone. My name is Kit Keller, Executive Director of APBP. My thanks to you and to Kevin Lucas, who is APBP's first fellow for his work on APBP Live. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.